get some booms in the chat for another guide for the golden shot difficulty level is hard and I'm going to show you nine shots in how to get a good chest here in this version before we start don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also visit golfclashtommy.com for more golf clash related content especially check out our wind chart creator there which will massively help you especially if you're not using any form of application last but not least if you do want to have a training session with me you maybe want to have the best tournament text guides on the market you maybe want to have text guide for the tournament that is specifically adapted to your clubs check out patreon.com slash golf clash tommy link to patreon is directly at the start of the video description down below here if this golden shot we will be playing a course of the santa ventura and the good part with the golden shot is that it's time to stock up with berserkers for free because everyone gets one free shot so spend that one wisely and that's going to be now hole number seven from the latest tournament and hole number seven here you can see that we do have an uh, invitation to play the rough bump we also have the fireway to bounce over towards the pin and i'm going to uh, get back to you a little bit with my thought process here before uh, um, before that we check out what chess we can win obsidian chess with the nine berserker balls uh, for the hole in one amber chess for the five berserker balls and the yellow ring Crimson chest for the three berserkers and the red ring and then we do have aqua chest for the two berserkers and the light blue ring and last but not least we do have the cobalt chest uh, which is a dark uh, ring uh, or like a dark blue ring with one berserker if you do have more questions about the golden shot you press the question mark on the top right and then you can read about the frequently asked the question if you have even more questions you press the contact us and then you can talk to the support. We are going to be playing with two types of clubs here. I really, really dislike when it is like that, but in this situation, we have no choice. So in Tailwind and in Crosswind, we're playing with the Golden Long Iron. Why do we not play the Rough Bump in Tailwind and Crosswind? It's because we are going to be in between clubs. So then we need to play on the island on the back right. You're gonna see the landing position in just a bit. And that's going to be a must. It's going to be maximum distance with a 10% over adjustment, which is 1.66 per ring. They make it even more simplified for you. You check out the VPR table on the top right corner, which is specifically for the golden long iron. So top right corner, the column to the two columns to the right that you can see for the golden long iron in a headwind we are going to play with a golden wood club and why don't we just play with the golden long iron when we play that in tailwind and crosswind it's because we are in between clubs in headwind when playing with the golden long iron and we'll have to massively over overpower our shot and that's not something we want to do golden wood club minimum distance with a 10 percent over adjustment 2.33 per ring and once again to make it more yeah or take make it easier for you you check out the two columns on the left so the one of the two that is most to the left is the one for the golden wood club Let's take a look about the landing positions and we start of what we would do in headwind and that is with a wood club and you can see that we are just in absolute minimum distance here so we are pressing our club back into absolute minimum distance and we are going to apply the spin here so we're applying the 2.7 backspin and then maximum right spin all the time. The reason we pull the maximum right spin is to prevent us rolling down the hill with a bad adjustment. And you can also see by the ball guideline is going slightly to the right of the pin. And this is going to be a little bit tougher to replicate because we don't really have many references to work with. So have that in mind. In a tailwind and a crosswind, we're playing absolute maximum distance, which is going to be the plus three yard mark. And then we do have the red ring to the left by the rough line to the left. And here it doesn't really matter if you're adding spin first or if you do that second. It's still going to be the red ring to the left by the rough line to the left all the time. 
Except for one little thing here though. If you do have more Tailwind than you do have Crosswind, you are going to first start with this position, then you're going to back up to plus one. So plus one yard mark instead of the plus three, and that you're going to see on the video. The reason we do that in more or less straight Tailwind is due to the fact that we will otherwise go too far like we will not go as far to miss all the rings but we will get too far that we will miss the yellow and the red ring and roll uh, roll into the light blue ring instead as always we do have the amazing text guide made by tony riches and based on this video which you can find in the description down below and also on our website golfclashtommy.com and here you can see the easier ways where we do have the rough bump on the left and we do have the fairway bounce on the right please read the descriptions carefully because this is a tougher golden shot than we are used to and if you do want to do well you need to get the details correct but i promise you if you do get the details correct you are going to see a very good result for this golden shot so in the end let's uh, enough talk about that and it's time to check out the videos and as always you know after we have seen the videos we will summarize uh, this spin so let's go so let's take a look at shot number one now we do have a little bit more tailwind than we do have crosswind and we're looking for the landing position being left side of the red ring by the rough line in complete max distance have in mind that when you do have more tailwind than you do have crosswind we need to back up so we start at plus one yard mark instead of plus three the reason we're gonna do that is because otherwise we will be coming in too hot and if we do then miss like we are doing here now we will be uh, staying you know either to the fourth or the fifth ring and we always need to at least stay at the third ring which would be the red one there one bar of left spin is what i used a little bit too much but we came in very very close making the hole in one here on shot number one and we go directly to shot number two 5.7 and as explained before we follow the column vpr column on the top right because we are going to do that in tailwind and crosswind red ring by the rough line to the left max distance and now we do have more crosswind than we do have tailwind and therefore we are going to keep ourselves into max distance max backspin and as much side spin to the left possible and the thing that we do need to have in mind with this type of wind is that we do need to use a little bit of counter curl meaning touch the inside arrows to the left with your ball if you would have done that or if we would have done that then we would be coming in much more nicely getting in hole in one on this one now we just barely roll out out of the yellow circle there or yellow ring but in the end it's a nice shot we're coming in a little bit too much we know know what we do need to tweak which is giving ourselves a little bit of curl so let's go to shot number three now we do have a little bit of headwind what do we do then we follow the left the left side vpr column and i'm using max side spin to the right and you can see there that i added two bars of backspin and now this is a tricky part we are trying to aiming directly at the hole but coming into the right hand side meaning we do want to aim on the right side of the pin to have the best possible rollout. And the reason we go for the rough bump is because when we're playing on the island or like the fairway pad, we are going to go in between clubs. And now we're playing minimum distance with a 10% over adjustment. And you can see that we're coming in a little bit too hot. We are definitely coming in with, you know, a good direction, but a little bit too hot. So in headwind, that's where we are doing that. And now we come back to crosswind here, coming left to right. We go di definitely directly up to max distance. Look for the red ring B by the rough line, ladies and gentlemen. And here, as explained before, we don't need to add spin first. The landing position is still going to be the same. 6.2 gives us 3.7 rings. And here you can see that I'm using a little bit of counter curl to the left to compensate for uh, the wind push that we're having coming left to right. You can see the camera angle 
and in the end we're using a little bit too much curl this time and again I just want the ball to touch the inner side of the arrows to the left just touching not as much as we had there but now it's good we have missed right we have missed left with the same type of wind now we know it's going to be somewhere in between and that is a very very valuable thing when you're trying to dial shot in 5.6 and we are going to start in the max distance of our position there we bring by the rough line to the left and adding max backspin and now when it's our turn we are obviously going to adjust 5.6 that gives us 3.4 rings so we adjust the 3.4 and then we're going to take our shot and you notice here that we're not using any side spin whatsoever to just have the wind pushing ourselves in towards the pin but once again we are not getting the side spin entirely correct we come in with a very good speed but need that little little side spin to the left there to be okay so thorn and then we do get the sandless start we also get the apocalypse and then berserker balls so we go again and we have now a headwind in some sort and now i'm adding max side spin to the right with three bars of backspin and the three bars of backspin you're going to notice that it's going to be a little bit too much again we are deliberately aiming on the, off the right side of the pin because that is what we do need to do we cannot aim directly at the pin then we will not be getting the same rollout as we do want adjusting for a 6.8 is 2.9 rings and we hit the ball perfect and you're gonna see us bounce into the rough but we're gonna come short short and directly in line so we do need to tweak that three bars of backspin is a little bit too much but again you know here you see the difficult part with having two types of way of playing depending on wind because it's harder to dial in when we cannot play the same type of shot but in the end we need to have the two types of adjustment here due to the fact that we will be in, in between clubs playing on the fireway island if we do have a headwind and if we do have a tailwind we will be in between clubs for the rough bump max backspin look what i do here now and we do go back to plus one yard mark in the end so plus one yard mark you start with the red ring by the rough line at the top and then you back up to the plus one yard mark it's only when you have more tailwind then you do have crosswind otherwise you should not be doing so because this we do to compensate for the wind push that we're gonna have and you can see here that even though we don't get the hole in one we get so so close it gets to stop at the yellow ring and that's what we do want to do obviously if we do not get this ball in the hole directly or for that matter you know miss miss that shot then it's a yellow ring or a red ring that we minimum want to get can we get the hole in one though however because we have been super duper close so now we do go to a 5.4 headwind and crosswind now we are playing this wind uh, a lot of times and we're going to go with a 2.7 backspin max side spin to the right and you can see here from this angle we're aiming for the right side of the pin 5.4 take a look at the vpr column to the left 2.3 rings is what we are going to adjust so we take this and we adjust the 2.3 and then it's time to take our shot perfect ball and you're going to see this ball travel in the air bounce into the rough we like the camera angle right at pin so in the end then we do have the hole in one finally 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 and i do believe that playing the rough bump will maybe give us a little bit more hole in ones but here i would say definitely that both type of routes no matter what type of wind is super solid and has been tested a lot of times getting some tsunami cards and then we do have some berserkers
So thank you so much for watching this guide for the golden shot difficulty level is hard. So let's summarize here with spin. Have in mind that we're doing two types of approaches depending on what type of wind direction we are having. So we start with the one that has the least amount of arrows, which is headwind. If we do have a headwind, we play rough bump, which you have on the left side of the text guide. 2.7 backspin max right spin with wind coming right to left and left to right with headwind. And if we do have a straight headwind, we play two and a half a backspin and max a right spin. And the aiming point is going to be in complete minimum distance with the ball guideline going just right of the pin. If we do have a crosswind coming right to left, we have four backspin, no side spin, letting the wind push us towards the pin and now we are playing the fairway bounce which you can find on the right side of the, of the text guide. And if we do have a crosswind coming left to right we start at plus three yard mark max distance four back max left we also adding a little box there called baby curl and I explained that in the video so please watch that again if you didn't see it and baby curl means that I want you to take the ball and just touching the inside left arrows like the inside arrows on the left side of the adjustment ring just touching it not cracking the ring but just touching it that's to compensate for the wind push there if we do have a tailwind crosswind coming left to right we go max back spin and max left spin if we do have a tailwind crosswind coming right to left we go max backspin, no side spin whatsoever. And if we do have a straight tailwind or we have a more tailwind than we do have crosswind, we go max backspin, one and a half bar left spin, but we back up to plus one yard mark. And you can see that on that arrow as well. Very important, otherwise you will go too far. And if you're not hitting the pin for a hole in one, you will wonder what the H did happen there. Why didn't I get even the red ring or the yellow ring? So that's why we need to back up to the plus one yard mark. And there we have it landing positions real quick. We do have in fairway bounds. Uh, we do have the red ring by the rough line, max distance position. Only reason we change that is if we do have a more tailwind and crosswind, then we back up to plus one. And then we have the rough bump on the top left, minimum distance ball guideline on the right side of the hole. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much once again for watching this guide and tutorial for the golden shot. Let me know in the comment section below if you do if you did get a chess and what did you get in it. Maybe you unlock the apocalypse, maybe you didn't. But in the end, spend, the, uh, spend your free shot wisely on this tough golden shot and claim some berserkers. You can also check out the, the guide for medium, which is also uh, one from Santa Ventura, which will bring home some kingmakers. Once again, thank you so much and good luck in the golden shot.